What's up everybody, welcome back. Before we get started, I should probably address the elephant in the room because this is the first video I've done since the channel was hijacked last week. I was gonna do a full video on this, but I thought I'll just give you all a quick explanation and then we can move on. So long story short, uh, some scumbags got my information through an email and last Thursday, right after I posted the pistol whip video, which if you haven't seen that, please go watch it. It was only up for like an hour before all of this happened. Um, I went to get on YouTube and interact with you guys in the comments and I could not log in. And I immediately knew that was a huge problem. And then I watched in horror as the entire channel was stolen from me and there was nothing I could do about it. And to make matters even worse, they immediately went live and had a terrible cringy crypto stream going. I mean, if you're gonna steal my entire channel, the least you could do is post good content. That's all I ask. So as you can imagine, it was pretty stressful. I spent four or five days trying to get everything back. Luckily, YouTube does have a system in place to help you recover your channel if something like this happens. I also wanna give a shout out to CloverTac. He's a gun tuber and he was very helpful in getting this process started, so go check him out and all the viewers who reached out to me on Instagram to let me know what was going on. I was aware because unfortunately I was watching it happen in real time, but I appreciate the concern and the heads up that I got from everybody. When you spend four years building something and someone can just take it in a matter of seconds, it's obviously pretty stressful. So that's pretty much the entire story. Thank God we were able to get it back and hopefully nothing like that ever happens again. Let's start the video. All right guys, today we have some homemade body armor that was sent by a viewer. And I don't think I've ever done a video like this with something one of y'all sent, so I'm excited to give this a shot. Now this was sent by NC Mountain Adventures. He does have a YouTube channel, so go check him out. He reached out to me on Instagram and said he had some homemade body armor that he would like me to try. He even wrote One Shot TV versus NC Mountain Adventures. I will destroy you. This is made up of stuff that was just laying around the house and he said it cost less than $10 to make. I'm not 100% sure what's all in here. What I do know is there's obviously duct tape, I think there's some tin foil in there, construction paper, and a layer of pennies right in the middle. He was very confident that this will stop up to a 44 Magnum and probably even bigger calibers than that. So if you want to know exactly how he did it, go to his channel and ask him. Let's start shooting this thing. And by the way, if you're watching this and you have a good homemade body armor you'd like to send, shoot me a DM on Instagram and maybe we can make this a contest for the ultimate homemade body armor sent by viewers. All right, buddy, moment of truth. Let's see what your creation can handle. We're gonna start with the nine millimeter and we're shooting it out of the Canik TP9 SFX. And that one went in right there, pretty close to the bullseye. If we flip it around, it did not come through. There is a tiny little bulge there though. Next up, we have the 45 ACP and we're shooting it out of the Smith & Wesson MMP shield. I have a bad habit of putting bullets in the same hole when we do these body armor tests, so I'm gonna try not to do that. The 45 makes a much deeper boom than the nine millimeter. By the way, this one on the very bottom is from the first nine millimeter that I shot. I always forget about the height over bore with the red dots and I pulled that one low. I wasn't gonna show you because it's embarrassing, but either way, here is our 45 ACP, also pretty close to the bullseye and you can see the size difference in those entrance holes. If we flip it over, the 45 also did not go through. And I know a lot of you guys probably own body armor and making your own isn't really something you care to do, but I always think about SHTF, and if there was no body armor available, it might not be a bad skill to learn. So that's why I like doing these tests. We always skip the 40 Smith & Wesson and all the 40 caliber guys get mad at me. So we'll go ahead and try it, shooting this one out of the Glock 23. Try to put this a little bit more to the left so we can preserve the middle. That packed a punch. Well, that was the first one to completely knock the box off the table, so that's a win for the 40, and that one went in right here towards the left side, and it also did not go through. 
I was kind of worried about that one, I'm not gonna lie, because it knocked that box off with such authority, I thought, surely it went through, but it did not. Next up, we have the 10 millimeter, and we're shooting this one out of the Glock 20. This is where we start to get into the more powerful stuff. And if I remember correctly, I think this gun is shooting a little high. Actually, I'm gonna put one on that yellow plate. Not really. Man, that thing barks. And the 10 millimeter went right there. We're putting all these bullets pretty close together, which is a tough test. By the way, that one also knocked the box completely off the table. So we have the nine millimeter, the 45 ACP, 40 Smith and Wesson, and the 10 millimeter right there. And it stopped it. That is definitely the biggest bulge on the back so far, but it did stop the 10 millimeter. Not bad. The 10 millimeter is a pretty big step up from the others that we shot. So anytime you can stop that bullet, it's impressive. All right, I went ahead and flipped it around so we can start fresh. And I would say this is our first wrist breaker of the day. This is the Taurus Ultralight 44 Magnum revolver. And I don't know why I grabbed this one because it's easily the most painful 44 Magnum that I have. And to make matters worse, we are shooting a 300 grain bullet. So. I just kind of went in the safe and grabbed some stuff, and now I'm regretting it. By the way, the 44 Magnum is the biggest caliber that 3A body armor can reliably stop. So let's see if this does. And it looks like we got a solid hit. Thank God, because I don't want to shoot that one any more than I have to. You can see where that 44 Magnum went in right there. And no exit hole. Actually, not even really a bulge. The 10 millimeter did more back face damage than the 44 Magnum did. Interesting. All right, let's throw a little curveball at it. This is the 5.7 by 28, and we're shooting it out of the Ruger 57. Now, this is the blue tip 40 grain 5.7, and 3A body armor will stop this, but not all the time. I have seen the blue tip defeat 3A before, so let's see if this can stop it. And as you probably noticed, compared to the others, there was really no energy transfer there at all. It barely moved the box, and it's just a tiny little bullet that zips right through stuff, which is why it's so good at defeating body armor. Hopefully you can see the tiny little cute entrance hole right there at the top. If we flip it over, there is no exit hole. So it did stop the 5.7. And next up, we have the green tip 5.7. This is a 27 grain bullet, and this one does consistently defeat level 3A body armor. And it does so rather easily. This little sucker is pushing dang near rifle velocity out of a handgun. It is screaming fast. Whew. It sounds like a rifle too. <laughs> Green tip 5.7 went in right there, and if we flip it over, once again, there are no exit holes, and you can also see on the box that nothing went through. Well, I was kind of hoping it wouldn't get to this point, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. And for this one, we are shooting a 440 grain hard cast Underwood. It's painful. I can almost guarantee I'm gonna flinch and pull this one low, but we'll give it a shot. Well, I definitely saw some confetti go flying, and judging off the box, I think it probably went through. So let's take a look. Our 500 Magnum hit right there 
just below the 44 Magnum. And I don't know if this is fair because it did hit so close to the other one, but we're going with it. Let's flip it over and take a look. So you can see it absolutely did blow right through this thing. Surprisingly, it stayed intact. It really didn't compromise the integrity of it a whole lot besides the massive exit hole on the back. And then you can obviously see on our box right there and the exit hole right there. I actually had a big piece of wood in here. And I wanna see what it did to that. Okay, so it looks like it missed the wood, but there is some confetti. Unfortunately, no bullet fragments. But since I'm such a good guy and I wanna give this a fair review, I'll go ahead and try it one more time and see if we can hit somewhere over here, away from the other bullet holes. I'm sacrificing my hand for your guys' entertainment. You better hit that like button. That recoil is stupid. I'm gonna go ahead and say it went through. It literally sounds like a bomb going off when the bullet impacts the body armor. That is crazy. And that one violently ejected the box and the body armor from the table. You can see how far they got launched off the back. And I believe that I am looking at an exit hole on the back. If we flip it over, yep. So that is the 500 Magnum entrance hole there on the top right corner. And then there is the exit hole on the back. So once again, it did blow through. And right here coming out the back of it was a penny that looks like it was struck by the 500 Magnum and kind of formed into the shape of the bullet. That's hilarious. Here is our box and you can very clearly see where that bullet went through into the box and then once again blew straight out the other side as well. So there is our definitive answer. This body armor will not stop a 500 Magnum, but it will stop everything up to a 44 Magnum, including a green tip 5.7, which is better than most 3A body armor. So not bad. Now he also said that he is currently working on some plates that will hopefully be able to stop rifles. So maybe one day we'll try those as well. And like I said earlier, if any of you guys have good homemade body armor that you would like to send, shoot me a DM on Instagram and we'll do more of these videos. I love testing stuff that you all send me. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.